No reason to worry or buckle at the knees. Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game. Ready to slay, I'm painted up. My legs are crossed, and I filled my cup with sassy cues and some wits to gag. My lips are glass, addition in drag. Dishing, dishing, dishing in drag. Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion, nipped and tucked and ready for action. Guess galore and games to play. Q spotlight, don't look away. Glitter and lashes on every curve. Cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve. The saucy tea to make your tail wag. The curtains up, addition in drag. Oh, hello, my kittens! How are you? We are live on Facebook. Yes, we are! You start a watch party, you share the videos, you pass me around like it's Saturday night. Oh! Feel free to like it, love it, lick it, and shove it all over that screen. Oh, we'll be doing some trivia tonight, so you make sure to comment, chime in, and I will do my best to follow your questions and ideas on that little comment section on Facebook. But you know, I am not too good at handling two things at the same time. Usually I do three or four, if you know what I mean. Ah! Oh, I am here to ejaculate everyone. Educate. I am here to educate everyone. Yes, I am. March is here. Woo! And I learned that it is National Ass Management Awareness Month. So I encourage you to stand up and look in that mirror and take a look at your backside, your tushy, and your biscuits. And make sure you manage them correctly this month. Oh, if it is looking droopy, do a squat. And if it's looking tight, keep it taut. And if it's jiggly, whoo, it's like you hit the jackpot. And if it's flat as a pancake, well, you just got to stuff it with everything you got. Oh, that's what I do. It's like my typical Saturday night. Oh, all right. So what was that? It's not National Ass Management Month. Asset. Well, what's asset management month? Is it money related? What is, oh, so if your ass makes you money, make sure you bank it and save it for a rainy day. A rainy day, that's right. Oh, speaking of shaking that tushy, I hope you all got a chance to download a little song. Oh, I released my single last week. It is on all the platforms. Proceeds go to the Penobscot Theater Company. Yes, it does. So you take a second and download me on your phone. Oh, and that means you can play with me anytime you want. Oh, I'd love to see you pushing out some PP pee -pee at the grocery store, the gym, and even in line while you're getting your vaccine. Everyone should have some PP pee -pee streaming in their ears. Oh, which brings me to my first trivia question, everyone out there, okay? Are you ready? 
I want you to comment on the Facebook live stream. What is the name of my single that we just released last week? What was it called? I want to see it. <gasps> oh, now. I am so excited for tonight's pre-show soak. It is National Caffeine Awareness Month. Yes, it is! And located on Park Street in downtown Bangor, they are truly magnificent. They're baked goodies, coffees, teas, and well, everything on their whole menu makes my mouth water. And when my mouth sweat, you better watch out. Oh, Carrie and Mary from the Wicked Brew Cafe are here. Hello. Oh, look at you. Sort of. Hello, how are you? Oh, now tell us, raise your hand. Which one's Mary and which one's Carrie? I'm Mary and I'm Carrie. Oh, thank you for joining us on a little dish and drag on March 1st. Now tell me, Wicked Brew Cafe, can you tell us a little bit about it? Everyone out there watching, want to know what Wicked Brew Cafe is. We're a little family owned, me and Mary, cafe, and we do everything from scratch. We, um, we make all our baked goods, breads. Uh, even our civil syrups, all from scratch. Um, yeah, this, uh, we've just started our third year. Um, so we've been open a full three years as the Wicked Brew Cafe. And um, we use Wicked Coffee uh, as our supplier. And as Carrie said, we try to make everything in house and uh, we try to locally source. Mm -hmm. So in the summer, we'll use all farms to have our microgreens and our uh, lettuce. We have a nice little farm up in Dover and they uh, are off the grid. So they are very green, <laughs> helping our environment. So that's our, that's our mission is we really want to uh, leave a small footprint and try, try to help our environment yep. and give you good food. Yes. <laughs> You're breaking up a little, but I love that you have a small, trying to make a small footprint. <laughs> Everywhere I go, it's a gosh darn charge footprint. I'm telling you, it is. <gasps> so tell me, tell me, tell me, how can, is, now during COVID times, you're open. Are you open regular hours? No, oh, we um, have switched to Monday through Friday, seven to three until um, probably summer. And then we're probably going to expand back to regular hours. We're still doing dining. In. We're still doing takeout and curbside for people who don't want to come in and sit down. And we're just trying to work it back up to where we were before COVID. <laughs> I cannot believe it has been three years. Yes. Oh my gosh. I feel like you're just a staple in this community now. When I hear Wicked Brew Cafe, I just feel like you've been here all the time. Oh, well, we appreciate that. <laughs> we try and I have to say, I have to you're breaking up a little bit. I do want everyone to know you are located on Park Street at the top, almost at the top of that hill. And your venue is so adorable. Not only can you just go in there and get a coffee, but you can go in there and do a little studying. Um, you usually have live music there, which is amazing. Um, I just, it's such an eclectic atmosphere there. And I, I just feel so safe and inviting when I go there. So I don't know if anyone, I don't know if you have a goal in your your um, decorations there, but I love it. Thank you. Thank you. We, we're just eclectic people. And we just kind of try to bring it into our shop. Oh. <laughs> we like to support the local artists. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of artwork on our walls from local artists from Bangor. You can kind of see them behind us. Yeah. We have a few artists. We have like the one directly behind us with the faces. That's actually a 14 year old girl. Uh, in the Bangor High School. Oh, so now you just yeah. got Priscilla Poppycox headshot. <laughs> we would love your headshot in our shop. <laughs> you want the customers to come in, so. Oh, thank you oh, so come much. come on, you're beautiful. <laughs> I just need to say, um, we at the Penobscot Theater Company just adore you both and your company so much. Um, tonight during trivia, a winner is going to receive a Wicked Brew Cafe gift certificate. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for being here. I know we're a little choppy, but everyone watching, go get your gift 
Exclusive food at the Week and Brew Cafe. Oh, mwah, Thank mwah, you. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mary and Carrie, don't you just love them? They are adorable. Ooh. Now, the little trivia question now that you just talked about, we got Wicked Brew on our ears. So what is your favorite treat to order from the Wicked Brew? And the first person to comment on that Facebook Live is going to get a little gift certificate to the Wicked Brew Cafe. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Okay, let's get on with this show, shall we? Now, our first guest is a man, oh, yes, he is. And I hope he is compared to deal with my ass tonight. Sass, to deal with my sass tonight. Sheer madness was, he was improv on that stage. In beauty, his dancing was all the rage. Oh, and in Rock of Ages, his German was on a rampage. This evening, we'll see how naive he really was playing the one and only Benjamin in The Graduate at PTC. He is fun, he is sexy, and he's all mine tonight, everyone. Alex Sayers is here! Oh. Woo! Happy to be here, Priscilla. Good to see you. Your energy, it just feels like you're right here with me and I just might need a moment. I'm just, I'm playing off of you. You're giving it to me, I'm giving it back. We're just playing some tennis here. <laughs> oh, it's like my ritual right there. Um, so <laughs> how are you? You are not in Maine, you are Chicago bound, am I right? Correct, we've been here for uh, going on, we're coming into year three at some point soon. Um, so that's really exciting. And uh, it's been a great time out here for a while. And, uh, you know, we moved out here for theater and obviously we've been in the same boat as everyone else the past year and a half, but we're real excited for when it roars back because this town is really a pretty happening place for new and creative theater. Yeah, so my question is what, is, what is your favorite part about Chicago? Ooh, my favorite part, honestly, uh, just being a foodie, there's so much unique cuisine and like all kinds of like Eastern European stuff. And then like, we got this new Indian place we're obsessed with and just any type of cuisine you want, except for maybe some like really good fish cause we're in the middle of the country, um, you can get it. And so uh, we just love that part of the city. I'll serve you some fish. <laughs> Thank you so much. <gasps> okay, so I have a question for you. It's a little who yes. would you rather, okay? Who would you mm. rather drink scotch with, play hopscotch mm. with, or make butterscotch with? Barry Newport, Alan Adams, or Meredith Perry? Well, I know I gotta drink scotch with Meredith Perry. Yeah! Um, I mean, she's the one. Um, I definitely think Barry's gonna have a pretty awesome take on making butterscotch. So I think, unless you're, unless that's a euphemism, which I know the show is known for, um, but I'm gonna go with making candies. That sounds great with Barry. And then Alan and I, I would definitely love to play a little hopscotch with that guy. So I'm gonna, those are my three. I would love to see you, Alan, playing hopscotch. Oh, Adorable, you right? Ball and then you jump over it. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. Let's get some other people here, okay? Are you ready for this? Yes. She blew us away with her performance in the season's PTC hit, Flying Solo. But looking back, in A Christmas Story, she was the mom who was cautious. In Hair Frenzy, she was gray and almost unconscious. And in God of Carnage, she was everything but mostly nauseous. Oh, I have a feeling tonight she will be none of those things except nauseous. Depending on <laughs> what's in her ass. Her glass. Depending on what's in her glass tonight. Oh, let's see how many times she can spank Alec playing his mom, Mrs. Baddock, in The Graduate. Welcome, Jerry Missler! Oh! Hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh. That was a wonderful, wonderful poem. Will you will you send it to me? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna frame it and remember it forever. I have such a way with words. You do. <laughs> oh, how and my glass is empty, but oh, I gotta fill it. Well, I was gonna say go do that now, but it might have been awkward. So you wait, and I, next time I see you, you come on the screen. I want it to be full, okay? My goal is to get you thrown up by the end of the night. <laughs> so here's. Some questions for you are you okay who would yes. you rather and now that we have alec in the room we have to use him okay you know what i mean so who would you rather drink a bottle of wine with drink a glass of wine with or play spin the bottle with alec barry or alan mm. spin the bottle well let's see i think i'm gonna have to go with alec because I was backstage right when he was doing his little, you know, uh, 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 on the stage in the graduate. So 
I got the rear view, if you know what I mean. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah. And then, um, you know, drink a glass of wine. Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta go with, um, I gotta go with Barry because her, she's just brilliant. It's so, I just love hanging around with her and, and with Alan, you know, it's wide open. What? So you're having a bottle of wine with Alan Adams. Yeah. I mean, oh. did you see him in Flying Solo? Oh my yeah. God. He's really smart. He is so good. And he's going to play hopscotch with Alec and then he's drinking a bottle of wine with you. He is going to have a good time. <laughs> okay, let's talk. Third guest. While I'm getting my third guest, Jerry, please go get drunk. I mean, get a drink. Our third guest, our third guest is a hoot. She... <laughs> <laughs> she too is probably still basking in all of the applause from her work in Flying Solo. We remember in her in the full Monty when she was a lady with all the chutzpah, dancing and singing in the trailer park musical. She played my ma. And her Mae West and Dirty Blonde was bang, made Bangor hem and haw. And tonight she's here to slay. She is sharp witted and tipsy in The Graduate, playing the one and only Mrs. Robinson. Let's see how tipsy she is tonight. AJ Mooney! <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh, hi! Oh, you are a dream. So good to see you. So good to see you. How are you, my love? I'm great, I'm great. How are you doing? You look fantastic. Well, I knew you were gonna be on the show, so I decided to get ready. I love it. You look great. Oh, um, how, so I had a little, who would you rather? Are you ready? Okay. Who would you rather? And since we have Jerry, we have to use her now. So who okay. would you rather? take a walk with, do the cat walk with, or walk your cat? Barry, Alec, or Jerry? Uh, Barry, I would do a, I'd walk with my cat. Cause I think Barry and I get along great and we like our animals. A cat walk with Alec or Jerry? Yeah, who do you want to strut with? I would strut with Jerry. I would strut with Jerry. And then the last one was just take a walk with. <laughs> I'd just take a walk with Alec. I'd love to catch up with Alec. I'm but telling you, great. my writing is so good. It's, uh, well, I was hoping for a little edgier, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, I would play spin the bottle with Jerry. Cause I mean, we had that little session in Alge's wife, right? So I was like, well, let's do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, there are so many little mini reunions on this show tonight. Right. I'll just sit back and you guys talk. Okay, <laughs> let's bring in someone else. Okay, here she is, the woman who floored me in her performance in Flying Solo. I'm not sure if it was her animals, her minivan, or her undeniable ability to connect with everyone out there with her storytelling, but she is one of those actresses that can make you cry, laugh within seconds. And in Boeing, Boeing, she was a German and full of lust. Around the world in 80 days, her character on an elephant, she was thrust. And in The Graduate, she danced and boogied with her bust. Oh, and I hope she does it tonight! <gasps> Jenny Hart! Hi, I brought my bust tonight. It's down here. <gasps> oh, I brought mine. And my bum, too, is over here. <laughs> <laughs> it is Asset Management Awareness Month. So, um, And I, too, have brought my cans, but you can't really see them. I need to move up so we can see them, right? Ooh. <sighs> You're welcome, America. Okay, Jenny, how are you, my love? Doing great. Mm, I love you in green. Thank you. It's my favorite. Mm. Um, now, here's a little question for you. We have you have um, all three of them as your. Who would you rather, Jerry, Alec, and AJ? Okay. Who would you rather play Yahtzee with? Be in a yacht at sea with, or go see Yanni with? <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> um, I guess I would like to uh, play Yahtzee with Alec. Mm. I, don't know. I don't do math, so I don't know. I don't think Yahtzee's a good game for me. <laughs> and then um, also I don't do boats. <laughs> I would have you to go have in a yacht with bar behind you. You have a trunk bar that you put I on a boat. A, but it's mostly for the drinks. It's not for the boat. <laughs> Most things I do are for the drinks. <laughs> but I guess I would go on the yacht with Jerry and then the last thing with AJ. <laughs> AJ the last thing. 
last thing. I can't remember. It was AJ like maybe a full minute ago. AJ would love to go see yawning. There we go. <laughs> we would be great at that concert. <sighs> oh, thank you so much for coming on this show, Dishin and Drag. I am so happy you're here and I am so excited to do a little addition with you all. So let's get started with a little PTC production patui. I'm gonna give you a title, maybe you heard of it. <laughs> and I'd love for you to say a phrase, a word, a sentence, a song even, maybe you'd like to write a poem. Um, so up first, Alec, Beauty and the Beast. Kneeing my girlfriend in the face. Didn't expect that, did you, Priscilla? Is she still your girlfriend? She still is. I am so blessed to have Bethany Curtis in my life. Uh, happened? Well, so uh, Bethany, like, what? Really the knee. The knee, of course, of course. Uh, I was assigned a dresser for a very, a series of quick changes during Beauty and the Beast. And um, Bethany, my girlfriend, uh, working backstage uh, was that dresser. And I would regularly, unfortunately, not totally, to, totally not because I wanted to hit her, but would because it was dark and there's people running around in costumes and sweat. Uh, she would like at the end of the night, she would give me a towel. She'd be like three times tonight, two times, five times. And to this day, we actually just had a conversation about it the other day, how lucky I am that after that experience, she remained uh, with me. So that's the first thing that comes to my mind when you say beauty and the beast. I'm just wondering how many times he's need you. Honestly, we should double up. She deserves it. She deserves some vengeance. Everybody here tonight, how many of you need Alec or would like to meet him? Okay, next up, <laughs> Barry. Now this title just seems right up my alley. Last of the Red Hot Lovers. Ooh. Joey Levy. Oh, she's a dream. I know, right? Uh, yeah. She comes to mind and, you know, of course, Rich Kimball, he's, he's an institution. So, <laughs> you know, jumping off the Verrazano Bridge, hanging on to my purse, which I also did in a show with you, Priscilla, hanging on to that purse. Uh, but yeah, nothing witty there except just all that love for all those great people. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that Rich Kimball was an institution. I'd like a scholarship to learn. So somebody get him here. Oh, there's someone we need to get on the show. He's great, yeah, yeah. Okay, AJ, are you ready? Yeah. Matilda. Mm. Oh, there's an Irish accent there. I don't even know what the hell that was, but I just did. But yeah, the accent, the accent, like the, I look like somebody from Harry Potter and that beautiful little child I just wanted to squeeze every night. That's, oh. that's what comes to my mind. Mm, and you look so good as that character. Kevin Costi, right? He did the costumes? Yeah, that was like the best costume. That's, oh. That was great. Mm -hmm. Kevin Costi, if you're watching, we loved you and Matilda. You were all over that stage. All over it. It was wonderful. That wig was to die for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you good with accents? You said accent. Is that something that comes naturally to you? I have to work really hard at it, and then and then I have to then I can then I can get it kind of you know I don't know if it's natural after I work really hard at it, but yeah, I work at it definitely. Do they do they stay with you? Like, do you they ever? Do. Like, they can stay with me if I just kind of breathe through it. Yeah. yeah. Just, like like the one in like the one in uh, Boeing Boeing. Mm -hmm. I have to like really try to practice as that's very French accent, you know, and all of a sudden you turn into like a weirdo. Yeah, 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 I like, that's what I do. I just Can I say something about Matilda too? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, uh, AJ, I, I never got to tell you this, um, but if I remember correctly, you had this like really tiny stool that you got forced to sit on multiple times as that character. And that was so funny. I was roaring seeing that bit. That was such good. a good bit, that yeah, stupid that little fun. stool. That was good, 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 yeah. That was good. I, I, told, I was told to hold back a little bit. I was I was making it like a 20 minute thing and I was like, okay, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> like, we were all like, God, can she just put the <laughs> No, just sit the hell down. Poor little Matilda's just staring at you being like, do you need help? Okay. <laughs> no, that was really fun. I, those Christmas shows, they're really, really, really special to do. They take the life right out of you. 
for the entire holiday season. You have no other world, but you, but the, what you get back in that season and the audience and the children, it's like, it's, it's quite something. And you know that Dominic from the numerous Christmas shows that you've done. So yeah. Just like this show, it sucks the life right. It sucks the life out of you, but it's worth it in the end. Right. I always pictured you were about to milk a cow when you sat on that stool. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a whole different show, but I definitely would buy tickets too. Okay, Jenny. Flying yeah. solo. Uh, <laughs> freezing cold. <laughs> really? It was cold out there in the van. <laughs> Well, I think that's fun. I wonder if everybody really knew that like you were, you were alive in your van. I was a little afraid that mice might come in and like slowly eat away at me during the course of that show. I feel the same way on this show. Uh, didn't you show, Jen, Jenny, didn't you show like on Facebook, like a rack coming out of your engine at one point? Wasn't there like yeah, something that like, was, because it was like cold and then you, you turned your engine on and a freaking rack came out? Yeah, we were driving. Oh! Uh, uh. <laughs> driving. So I know they're in there. And it I came out they're in there. inside of your car? Yeah, she took a yeah, picture of it. Inside the engine. <laughs> but it, like, I don't remember that part in your monologue. No, I didn't, I didn't put that in. So like you're driving, like this is what you do. You're driving down the road and a rat comes into your van while you're driving? comes out between where the windshield white where the windshield is and where like where the windshield wipers are comes out of that so it's outside hanging on for dear life as you're like like this as you're driving <laughs> wait did you say did you save it or did you just let it like fly off um it ran away oh I feel, like, I feel like that's a children's story in the making <laughs> I'm gonna have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Most people have nightmares about this. It seems to Okay. Um, okay, back to- Can we just keep talking about that rat? <laughs> oh, it was insane. So the question is, do you still have the minivan? I do still have the minivan. Um, some dummy lights came on the other day. Um, so that's an unfortunate event, but um, as long as it's still drivable, I'm going to drive it. And then when it dies, it's going to go live on a little farm somewhere and um, be the home to some like goat will run on top of it and, you know, jump off of it. That will be the happy memories of that minivan stuff. That's hilarious. Well, thank you for sharing. The show is now over. Um, Alec. Yes. Your madness. Ooh. What a wonderful haircut I got every single performance. I mean, truly, every single day, I was like, what am I gonna get treated to? All right, the nerd do, thank you so much. I loved it, it was honestly, and I worry that I said this last time I was done auditioned, but I cannot stress enough how nice it was to have my hair washed every single performance, sometimes twice a day by your loving hands, you and Michelle's loving hands, it was so, relaxing and like really helped me get in the zone and it was wonderful I loved it so props to you folks and then the people who made the water work on stage I mean it was it was heaven it was wonderful everyone says that my hands are magic so I'm glad you got to experience that I can attest that they are very oh that's true I forgot that I got to wash your hair mm -hmm. <laughs> and it kind of um <clears throat> great um so Jerry mm. Staying on the same track, hair frenzy. Mm, mm. <laughs> a walker. <laughs> walker. That walker. I can't wait till I really get the opportunity to really use one. <laughs> uh, no, um, <laughs> hair frenzy. There's there's a whole show that AJ and I could do backstage during Hair Frenzy, right, AJ? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, uh, that show was, uh, was, it, was it was, it. I think we pulled all together and made a great team effort. 
And by gosh, we have a lot of fun, especially with those bows. You're welcome. That was, <laughs> I loved it. It was, I was, it was a, like a great whole play in itself at the bows. It, like, it was like, yeah, let's do it. I, so, have, um, you know, I just want to say hair frenzy. I was so excited that you accepted the role because you got to play the, the, the crazy old crotchety lady. And like, I fought for you because no, everyone was like, there's no way Jerry can play this. This is not, it's not going to be right. She's not, she's too young for this. And I was like, this woman is a character actress and can blow this out of the park. And she did. Name names. Name I names. had a ball. I had a ball sticking my totally butt out like that. Like I, I used to have to arch my back and like have that big butt, you know, and, and walk like that. And it was so fun. All I had to do was like transform my body externally and my internal character was there. What a blast. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really fun. Like I said, the, the, the walker, the purse, that whole thing was so great. Oh, I love that you talked about your ass. It's ass management month. Good for you. Right. Big butt. I like big butts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking. <laughs> everyone. We're everyone, dishing. Everyone, the three people that are watching are just loving this. <laughs> like thank you, Kim Stewart, thank you, Brian Beck. Thank you, Kat Johnson. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay. <laughs> Noises off. <gasps> Noises off, like yeah. like a hundred years ago. Well, yes. The the first show I did. Were you in it? No. Oh, he wasn't born is yet. Dog? Is it the sardine one? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. No, 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 no. I was having trouble in my life at that point, so I had a kind of a blackout about it. Um, and I got a really terrible review about it. Like no, like you. I, so funny. And second of all, I should have been in it with you. So whoever's watching and directed that show, you should have cast me in it. There, I said it. What was it like doing the role? Um, uh, well, I only had two weeks to do it instead of three because I was ill. And so when I came back, I was just like full on. But I loved working with Bobby Libby. Oh. I loved working with him. Uh, he was great. Uh, and I, I don't remember who else was in it. Was Alan Adams in that? Kay, Kay oh, Cooney Kay, was it. Kay Cooney. <laughs> She was amazing. Kate Cooney is awesome. Was Adam Kirkendall in that one too? I can't remember, but anyway, loved it. I love that show and I would love to do that show again. Mm -hmm. I don't know like what role I'd be now, but that's a great show. Probably Selston. Oh yeah, that's it. So, um, <laughs> no, but it was, that's my first role at PTC. And uh, yeah. I'm so excited that we're talking about it. Yeah, I think it's a great show. Oh, yes. Um, and Bob Libby, Rich Kimball, Kay Cooney, I'm sure you're all watching on screen right now. I'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> um, Jessica, do you already had it? You're getting hello, 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 you're watching. Okay, Jenny, last but not least, one blue tar. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. Thank you so much for that. My elderly dog, Belle, God rest her soul. <laughs> uh, backstage I just need you to know that um during one blue tarp I was knitting one blue scarf and it's still unfinished <laughs> over there a little bit <laughs> waiting for the revival that's so funny oh well maybe that should be your you're you're gonna finish it let's say it right now let's make a commitment you can. Sure, I'm really good at. I'm good at commitment. Sure. You can pay someone. To <laughs> okay. I am so happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing a little PTC production between. If anything, I hope it made it jarred a little few memories for you and how much you have meant to the Penobscot Theater over these years. You truly have made that place an amazing space. And just think about all those roles that you've done and how many lives you have changed by being on that stage and. I am so grateful that I got to work and know you all. So we have another trivia question for the public. <laughs> it is, what is your favorite musical that PTC has ever put on? What has been your favorite PTC musical from the past? And um, I'm sure some people will comment, mainly Brian, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. 
<laughs> and cat. Okay. If there's a Sayers contention out there. You all better be commenting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also people on the chat, AJ, are talking about how much they love your tap dancing. They said some of them were students of yours and they said that you were phenomenal, so. Oh, that's nice. And so if you could just do a little demonstration right now. No, uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. No. no. <laughs> okay, we are, we're getting off the rails, everyone. <clears throat> uh, so you are all in this show called The Graduate. So yeah. back at that show, let's start off with what was your favorite memory of doing The Graduate at the Penobscot Theater? Was it a rehearsal experience? Was it getting the call? Was it going out to dinner after a show? What was your favorite moment of The Graduate? Uh, let's start with Alec. I got a funny story about the call now that you bring it up. So. Uh, at the time, I was also the middle school director at Brewer Middle School, where I used to attend, which was a very full circle moment. Also, we've referenced Kay Cooney and Rich Kimball, my first t theater teachers. So shout out to them. Thank you for getting me oh, here today. Oh, you all up! <laughs> I know, right? Can't you just see the layers I'm trying to peel away? No, I love them dearly. Um, but so it was this very cool, you know, I'd spent the past year... Uh, being the director at the place where I first got inspired to work, which is very cool. And we were on break and I got a call from Barry and Barry said, oh, I, I want you to have the part. And I was like, so excited. I, 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 mean, I mean, it was thrilling and so cool to be, to know who the cast was gonna be and like what the show was and obviously the part, very cool. Um, all my students, my 12 year old students were like, oh, Mr. Alec, what's, what are you excited about? I said, I just got cast in a play. And they said, oh, cool, what is it? And I said, um, The Graduate. And they said, what's it about? And I said, mm, it's about a young man who has graduated high school, uh, college. And they said, oh, cool, cool, cool. And then they moved on and did TikTok or whatever they do. So um, that was a fun little, that was, a, that was the world the moment I got the call. Now, were you a huge fan of The Graduate? I, I was, I actually had never seen it. Um, uh, I had uh, watched it prior to the audition and I had, uh, I didn't read the book till after the audition, but I uh, watched the movie prior to the audition. And uh, I had known the tropes, obviously, and all that stuff. And obviously Simon and Garfunkel has been like such a cool thing to listen to through life. Um, but I was never, and it was interesting because as soon as I started telling people about it, particularly people who were of a different generation than me, they were suddenly so locked in because they were like, what a story, what a story that makes me feel like that spoke to me when I was that age or, or told my story when I graduated. And when I really dug into the text, I was only two and a half years out of college at the time. And I was like, wow, this is, other than the affair part, very similar to how I felt, uh, kind of aimless and, and without uh, direction immediately after college. So it's such an awesome timeless piece in that way. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, think we, I think a lot of um, directors and casting directors forget the joy that people get when they get offered a role. I think they forget how, what an achievement it is for, for you to be on the other end of the phone getting that call. So I'm glad you spoke about that. We all need yeah. to remember. Well, thanks that. for letting me speak about it because it really was joyous. And I think we should be allowed to feel super joyous when we get something we really hope for. So I thank you oh. for letting me say it. <laughs> all right, who's next? Memory. Oh, Jerry, you raised your hand. It's like we're in school. I guess I did a swipe like that. <laughs> um, I, you know, uh, I have to say that show was this incredible experience of at times being way over the top, just like so all out fun, like the psychiatristic, uh, you know, experience. And when, you know, Alex is, is, is flying through or the crazy cake eating, uh, you know, time. And yet it was also, and like, you know, Jenny put in an all out there dancing away, but it was also really grounded um, for me um, in, in, in a great kind of loving family character um, experience as well as the whole cast. I, I, I hope others felt that way because I felt like there was a lot of trust on that stage and backstage. There was a lot of things that had to happen for all those things to come off the way they did and as quickly as they did. Um, and it was really a team effort. And we were, we were really all um, 
really trusting of each other. Uh, DC Anderson, great guy to work as Mr. Braddock with. So that family, um, that family dynamic was really special too. So I, I, I get chills. I loved that show. It was great. It's funny because my character loathes the two of you, but I love the two of you. In <laughs> fact, you all can pull out the receipts. Whenever I text either one of you, I always address it mom or dad. You know, forever right. be my mom or dad. <laughs> Send him a check. <laughs> Please. Times are rough. Right. We put him through college. <laughs> Please. I don't get paid for this. <laughs> AJ, do you have a memory? Uh, I do, as a matter of fact. Well, not a memory. We forgot that. <laughs> no, I have a couple. I mean, I have two. Two. Uh, I mean, there's more for sure. I mean, yeah. Well, well, if you be, if you have to get totally naked on stage, that's kind of a thing. And and I didn't want to make it a thing. I just wanted to do the do it, and I did it. You know, not just do it, but I mean, make it part of the piece. You know, but to do it the first time in front of the director, the assistant director, you, Barry Meredith, and a new guy, Jose, who that guy was, that lighting guy. Um, to be naked for the first time uh, is, is like the biggest thing. And <clears throat> I remember doing that and you, I'll never forget you. Like you became like someone I fell in love with immediately and Barry and, and, and Meredith because you hugged me right after and you were so supportive that it was like, okay, man, let's freaking get this on. You are incredible, Dominic. I'll never, I mean, Priscilla Popcock, you are, I will never, ever, ever forget you doing that, ever. You've become one of my favorite people, you know, even more so. Um, but I gotta say, that dressing thing, uh, the, the choreographed thing going in and out of the doors was genius. And everyone behind me, the scenes helping me dress was genius. The family atmosphere and the trust was magnificent. I, have, I, I the casting was magnificent. So I, it, I'll, I am very proud of that work and I'm very proud of everybody that I work with. Like, I just, I don't know. I just, we were just a tight ensemble. Now, Kevin Kosky, the costumes, he's, we're bringing him up again. Yeah, so yeah. I just remember working on that piece and being like very specific about your choreography and getting into that of clothing. And I was like, the dress needs to do this. The dress needs to do this. She needs to be able to do this. No questions asked. And Kevin was like, got it, we can do this. And then he put his spin on it and it was like flawless. Well, if the people working backstage to get me in and out of those things fast and your choreography with Kevin, I mean, I, that's probably one of the, the prettiest moments. I've never, I've never seen it, but it felt beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, I, no, I didn't mean, cause I was doing it. It was just like a dance and I dig dance. So I just, I, I don't know, it was excellent. I don't know. And I love Jerry and DC and Alex and, and Jenny was hilarious. And Alan I can barely look at Alan on stage anyway. And he was fantastic. I mean, I just, I don't know, like Alan Adams could say one thing and it blows me out of the water because he's so funny. <laughs> and Jenny is this um, secret talent. It's very quiet. And then when she gets on stage, everything she does is, un is just, you know, you can't take your eyes off of her. And Jerry it's is solid true. as rock. What's that? It's so and true. And I just need to say, I can't have everyone in the show. It's like, so like, I want everyone here, right? Yeah. So all of you that are not here, that are part yeah, of not, the yeah. show, you are yeah. loved. And and, and, just, her, and and Alex's love interest uh, was just dynamite. Yeah, she's amazing. So yeah. yeah. I, you all, I mean, playing on stage with all of you made me better. And also we haven't hit him at yet. I think but that's true actually. It's so true. It is so, everyone elevates everyone else in the most beautiful way. I love it. And I just want to give a shout out to Arthur because he hasn't been mentioned yet. But another first full, full circle moment for me, when I was a young learning thespian, uh, Arthur Morrison was my first fight teacher. And then here I am in this play and I get to do a fight scene with him. And it was just so, I mean, you're right. This whole cast just. Yeah, Arthur was fantastic. He was perfectly cast. He was perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what's your, do you have a memory that, you, that just comes out as soon as you hear The Graduate? Um, well, I have more than a memory, Dominic. <laughs> I have a memento. Did you save them? No. <gasps> oh, Jenny. Yes. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> yes. yes. No, my I don't know, if I'm, I don't know if I was supposed to take them, but I did take them. My question is, <laughs> yeah. my question is how many times have you worn them since? Um, pretty much daily to work. 
<laughs> work because kids like tassels I was, I was <laughs> oh my like, god you're like grabbing at them what is that <laughs> you wear them as earrings i feel like you should have sent them to me i would have dressed in that tonight for you they would have looked magnificent on you hmm. next time next week next time. Next. Next. I love it. Oh, so looking back at this experience, like, did you, I asked um, Alec this a little bit, but did you, were you huge fans of the movie? Were, were you, when you saw this experience coming down the pipeline, you saw the season, were, were you already enamored with the, the idea of The Graduate on stage? Because it's fairly new for a stage production. What were your feelings about it? For me, I, I found that the role of Mrs. Braddock was so much better in the play. And when mm -hmm. I went back mm -hmm. and watched the movie, I was like, well, they just do these weird, like, you know, close-ups of her face every now and then and make her uh, like really wacky crazy. And and like I said, uh, well, I felt that same way about Christmas Story. Um, the the parent roles, uh, you know, Arthur and I were, were your parent, Priscilla. Uh, and uh, in the same way, like the roles are were so much more rich on stage um, than in the movies. It was really cut down. So it was just a joy to have that, that grounded momness in, in, in addition to all the wacky fun. That's so true. I forgot to, I didn't even think about that. You're right. Some of these characters were so much different in the play. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all the different characters that Jenny played, it was like, it was, it's just, it's just so cool to, I just think the stage version is amazing and, and I even more impactful than the movie. I mean, you know, the commitment that, that AJ had to that role, I, I, you know, and we see things like that on screen all the time. And yet, you know, here's somebody live, you know, putting it, putting all their trust in, in, uh, in the people on stage. Uh, is a, it's really impactful. And it's, it's what I hope we can get back to in live theater. We will. Yes. yes. I, on that note, Jenny, I mean, Jerry, ah, <laughs> mom. Uh, I do contend that I think the best scene in our production was the one I wasn't on stage, which is a scene not in the movie, not in the book, but this incredible insight into uh, Mrs. Robinson and her daughter's uh, life when when the two of you get a little drunk together after <laughs> learning about the affair and yeah. uh, just this, I mean, it's nice. It feels so much more three-dimensional than the movies and book ever did. And I understand they're from the first person, so whatever, but I, I really loved those moments. You two were so beautiful in that. Mm. Mm. Very true. Now, did you do a lot of character work on like getting tipsy? Me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, that comes kind of easy. <laughs> no, that was, uh, that was really, that was, I, that's what I liked about the, the, I liked the theater part of it, the depth of it. Like we went deeper than the, the movie was great. I mean, cinematically it's beautiful and yes. Anne Bancroft is gorgeous. And yes. I, uh, she's 32 in the movie and he's what 30 in the movies and that's a that's a thing and then uh but i i and i thought he was brilliant at the the theater experience is just different it's just a different mm -hmm. experience and i and i i can't really compare the two actually i just it it's just a deeper experience i think mm. were you em trying to emulate anyone were there moments in the in the movie that you're like i need to do that in this stage oh. No, I don't think so. I mean, you can't help, like I didn't want to watch it again or I didn't want to watch clips of it because you can get, I can get caught into like taking on other people's personalities anyway. Like if I see somebody do something like all of a sudden it's like in my body and I'm doing it. So I'm like, mm, no, I hope I, yeah, no, no, I didn't. I, I didn't want to get trapped. So I, I don't think I did. I don't so think you'll be looking like this tomorrow, basically. Like I will. I would love to look like that and have that dress and those false eyelashes. But I'd be like, at the breakfast, but I'd be at the breakfast bar with my mother and the three cats. I just feel like it's a lot of work. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, so um, a question for you all. So I've been, um, I've been privileged enough for the past few um, episodes to be getting my makeup ready with um, 
some maybe future drag queens or people just questioning that really wanted to get learn how to do some drag makeup. And I've been honored that I got to know them and, and play with them a little bit. But they brought up a question um, last uh, two weeks ago that I thought would, was really wonderful. So I thought I would ask you all, and you might have seen it because I'm sure you watch all the episodes. But how do you deal with reviews? So obviously this show is reviewed, but you're all actors and actresses. So in general, do you read them? Do they affect you? Do they? Do you not read them? Um, what is your feeling about reviews? And I just thought that was a great question. So I'm gonna keep asking it because she is a delight. It's such a good question. Anybody wanna talk? I already talked. I have a thought. Let's do it. But Jenny, did you wanna say something? I saw well, your mouth move. If it moved, it was, it was probably some kind of nervous tick, but thank you for pointing that out, Alec. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I just think that for myself, I really try not to fully read them until after the production is done. Um, because by, by the time the production is up and into its swing, I pretty much have chosen the direction that I'm going into. Um, so I don't wanna be influenced by a review. Of course, then there's always someone that's like, oh my gosh, to just say the review and what they said. So you hear little bits and pieces, but I try to wait until after the production is done and then read it and then sit in my bedroom and cry. Hopefully you have wine with you. Like, like why? You don't even get bad reviews. Uh. I think it's really hard because on some level, we all have to admit this is performers. We all got into performing in some way, shape or form because we really enjoyed how it felt when we did a thing and someone applauded. So that's like, deep in us. And hopefully it isn't your only driving thing, you know, obviously there's a lot of great reasons to be doing art, but that's in there. And so like you're saying, Jenny, there's this impulse of like, well, I have to be validated. I have to, I have to know that someone else approved. But one thing I've been really working a lot on lately is accepting that like the validation happened from the moment you landed the job. And the validation happened the moment that you started producing the work and the validation happened the moment the curtain went up because you're already there and people have opinions and they're entitled to them. Um, but it's, it's like a lifelong pursuit. I feel like it's gonna be to just not let someone else, like my desire to feel that validation come from someone else. I think it's important to, uh, when doing a show, it, I, I do want to know uh, whether the review was positive, not, not on a, not personally, but for the show, because you want people to hear about it and, and talk about it and come to the show and, and see, mm -hmm. and, and see the work. Um, but I, I do think that everyone has to keep in mind that it is just one person's opinion. So I can think a show on Netflix right now is amazing. And, and someone can go, what? Oh, you like that? I, I, didn't, I thought it was an awful movie or whatever, you know, so everybody does have their own approach. Um, you know, red wine, white wine, whatever, you know, you, you get all kinds of tastes. And um, so I think it's important to look at, at the big picture uh, and not, and not take it, you know, quite so seriously. Uh, but you're right. It is nice when it's a, a great review. It brings people into the theater for sure, or mm -hmm. drives them away. At the same time, I like, I like honesty too. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, there, there's a place where you can get a glowing review, but it may not deserve a glowing review, you know? So I like the honesty of it. And yes. you, you can go back and say, okay, I need to grow there too. Mm. Um, you know, I think that there's definitely been those times that, yeah, it's been kind of upsetting at first to read that or um, to know that someone felt that, but go, you know what? That was probably true and I could improve on that. So, mm. you know, there's, there's something to the honesty too. Yeah, mm -hmm. good point. Definitely. Good point. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where that's part of what it's part of the, the it's part of what you do. It's part of what it's it's the package. You sign up for this. So you sign up for um, mm -hmm. uh, you sign up for being on stage, which requires enormous amount of vulnerability. And then you have to um, like I feel like, oh, I'm like really sensitive. I'm a super sensitive person and I get reviews. And if it's not, and I'm so, I don't know what I, what my mental issues are, but as soon as like something is wrong, like if I get a review that's not quite right, I'm like, what did I do wrong? And that's too bad because you can't, 
but that's honest. That's me being honest. Um, you can't put your power into one person. And Jenny's mm -hmm. right. There could be times where you're like, ah, right. Could be right on this. And then there's other times that like Jerry's right on too. Like, let's pull the people in. Let's not pick, put a big, you know, we've got basically one reviewer for this entire theater. And, and so small town stuff can play a part in that, you know, like one, you know, we get used to each other and all of that. So, but, but my, my big thing is what Jerry said too, is like, let's, let's pull the people in because people look at that review, the, the regular people are out, out and out in the street and they say, Oh, it was bad. I'm not going to go see it because they think that that is a really important review. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, so it's, you know, it hurts and then you're supposed to walk through it and you're, can't take it all in and then don't be negative. I don't know. It's, it's, it's part way. It's what you sign up for. So I don't know. I love is. your thoughts on this. I really do. I think it's amazing. And I think so many people out there watching and they just come and see the show and they enjoy it and they leave or they might not like it. And they might have judgments about what you're saying. I always like to remind people that, you know, the actors and actresses are doing what they've been directed to do. So the thing to remember is that sometimes maybe Jenny's making a choice that you're like, I don't know why they're making that choice. She's, I don't like it. But the reality is she's doing the choice because the, the director wants it, you know? So I, I think that's something that we need to educate people on that, that that's what theater is, right? Um, I am just so happy as long as someone's throwing $2 bills when I'm done and I can go pay my parking meter, I'm happy. Um, so <laughs> I, again, I think... Uh, my review for all of you is star, 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 five star all around. You are phenomenal actors and actresses and we are lucky to have you in this community and I cannot wait much longer to get you on the stage. I am so excited for you. This, I'm this, this vaccine, everyone get vaccinated so we can get on stage again um, and we can get Alec back here too. Would love to be. Um, thank you all for doing the show. I, I know it kind of went by so quickly. You are amazing. And to the other cast members of The Graduate and the designers um, behind the scenes, we love you. The Graduate was a huge hit for the Penobscot Theater, but um, I think it was more of a hit emotionally for us all. I mean, it's great that it sold some tickets, but I feel like we all learned a lot about ourselves and each other and, and value that time and reflect on it so positively that it all happened for a reason. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Rag. Oh, everyone, thank you for watching. I love your comments. Musicals, people were talking about Mamma Mia. They were talking about Rock of Ages, Rocky Horror. Thank you, Kat and Brian and Jessica and Faith and Kim for playing along with me. You all are beautiful people. Um, those of you that watch the show, please afterwards share this little link. Maybe people were busy watching, you know, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. Yes, they were. So share this on that little Facebook so other people get to watch it. Um, oh, tune in next week as we have some more cast of characters. We will have Ira Kramer, Jen Shepard, Grace Livingston Kramer, and a virgin to our show, Amanda Eaton will be here. Oh, I can't wait to see her face. Oh, special thanks to Carrie and Mary from Wicked Brew Cafe. Please go visit them oh, and have celebrate Caffeine Awareness Month. And don't forget to celebrate Ass Management Month Awareness. Get it looking good, everyone. <laughs> Remember, wear your masks, stay six feet away, schedule your vaccine, and please save a little love for yourself. Don't you dare give it all away. Mwah.
has no friends and enemies No reason to worry or fuck unless they need Who am I? What's my name? Priscilla Poppycock, and it's my game Ready to slay, I'm painted up My legs are crossed and I filled my cup With sassy cues and some wits to gag My lips are glass, addition in drag Dishing, dishing, dishing in drag Hold your pearls, Priscilla's in fashion Nipped and tucked and ready for action Guess galore and games to play Cue spotlight, don't look away Glitter and lashes on every curve Cinched up tight, I'm ready to serve The saucy tea to make your tail wag The curtains up, addition in drag